Calvary Costa Mesa because on Sunday night you could go down front and camp out on the floor. It was great. I used to have my Bible and Chuck could be like right up there or where you're at, right there. You know, and I wouldn't be this close per se, but you know, it was kind of neat, you know, and didn't happen too often, but I remember in those days, you know, just camping out on the floor and enjoying it. You know, it was like, it was overcrowded, you know, and Sunday nights were always great times to study. And I kind of like that now, you know, I got a little carpet here, you know, and got a chance to kind of throw back to where I came from. And it's kind of like that when I share video grace. It's kind of like a throwback to the good old days, you know. Days of grace and mercy, times of God forgiving and God having really a perspective of wanting to save people from their sins. And nowadays, I'm not so sure that everybody wants to do that, which is why we started Video Grace, because it's grace that you're saved by, because it's not that you can do anything good, because you really can't, because you're pretty screwed up. <laughs> But the more you try to fix yourself, the worse you become. But the more you let God work on you, the better it gets. So I'm not sure if you kind of get the picture here, but you really could just kind of like kick back and enjoy grace and extend it to other people so that maybe they could get a good idea of what grace is all about. Just by kind of observing how easy it is on you. You know, letting God work on you and choosing to do right instead of wrong. You know, not wanting to really look stupid by being a sinner, you know, and then claiming to be a Christian, but, you know, trying to do the right thing and just saying, hey, you know, I'll admit it. Yeah, sure enough, I, I blew it. I'm screwed up just like you are, but I have grace. And that's the difference. I don't try to set myself up with a standard of righteousness that I can't live by. I try to recognize that if I can't do it, then I can't tell other people to do it because I know darn well that they can't do it either. So maybe together we could help each other find mercy in a time of need and find grace as God gives it to us. If we are going to set up a standard of righteous conduct, we need to use one established by Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only person whose life prompted God to say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3.17 To enjoy fellowship with God, we must be as righteous as Jesus. Ooh. In John 16.8 and 10, Jesus said, And when He, that is, the Holy Spirit is come, He will reprove the world of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Jesus' ascension into heaven was God's witness to the world about His Son. It was as if He were saying, This is the righteousness that I will accept in heaven. Jesus' life is the only standard of righteousness. If I want to be accepted by God, I must be as righteous as Jesus Christ. The scriptures show that there is only one kind of righteousness that God will accept. The very righteousness of Christ Himself. So if we want to stand before God on the basis of our own good works, you know, the fact that we're good people and we do good and we feel good and we think we're good, well, we must have a life that measures up to the goodness we see in Jesus. But I realize that is impossible. I can't achieve that kind of righteousness. Jesus himself said, I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew 5.28 He said, I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Matthew 5.22 He further said, Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smites you on the right cheek, offer the other. And him that takes away your cloak, forbid him not to take that coat also. Give to every man that asks of you, and of him that takes away thy goods, ask them not again. Luke 6, 27, 30. And he commanded us to love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Luke 6, 35. 
that's pretty messed up. <laughs> that is not the American way, is it? Let's be honest. Does that sound like an American? No. Does it sound like anybody you know? Probably not. But isn't that what Jesus said? Isn't that the life that he said and lived? And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I guess if you really wanted to be like Jesus, then you pretty much just found out how real that life was. I think you just figured out that how impossible it might be for you to live like that. I think you're beginning to realize that Jesus was perfect because that is what we're supposed to be like, isn't it? Aren't you supposed to love your enemies? Because the truth is you already know the answer to what I just said. You already know what Jesus said. You already know that you don't measure up. You already know for a fact what Christianity is all about. Because everybody knows the love your enemies routine. They just like to pretend like they don't know when they want to kill somebody or when they want to go to war for some righteous cause. Yeah, as though there were some gods that Jesus doesn't know about. Well, Jesus only meant it, you know, kind of, he didn't, he knew, but, but he didn't mean it. And yet, God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus didn't own anything or have a lot of possessions. He didn't join the service, become a military man. He didn't vote. He didn't do all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, if you boil it down, he just did those things that he saw his Father in heaven do. Because he said, this isn't my home. This is not where I belong. Take the world and give me my Father. This is not where I belong. I'm going home, and if you want to go with me, be like me. So you see, there's something about grace. Something about this attitude that God has towards our righteousness that we really can't measure up to. So we need to find some other way to approach God. Because we can't meet Him on the basis of our own righteousness. We can only meet Him on the basis of His mercy. And only hope that we find grace. Because with the death of His Son, He's opened the door for us to have grace and mercy. But the point is, only God can extend that to us. So, there might be a little more to this grace than meets the eye. There might be a little bit more that we have to consider than just having a free ride and taking it easy. There might be something to not condemning your brother when the fact is you can't even live up to your own standard of righteousness, can you? According to God, you can't.